Welcome back to your DB2 tutorial series. Now this video is going to begin our discussion on database design. Now those of you who have been subscribed for a while, you know I love database design and relationships. So dating advice 101, here we go. The very first thing when we're talking about relationships is what in the world is a relationship? Why do we want to learn about it if we don't really understand what it is. I think a lot of people forget that part. They just start explaining the different types of relationships, but they don't really explain why or what for or anything like that. So let's just take a step back and learn a little bit more detail before we go in and start explaining things. One word that is essential to know when it comes to databases is entity. An entity is just a thing. Now, when we store something in a database, it's called an entity. But the thing is we store about that thing like, you know, the attributes of that thing, those are called attributes. So the attribute describes the entity. And in fact, we can have multiple attributes describing one entity. This is obviously very general, using entity and attribute and all kinds of fancy words. But essentially what you need to know is that sometimes we are going to be storing something as the object, and other times we're going to be storing things as something describing the object. Trust me, that'll make more sense. Just give me a minute. <laughs> so a relationship is when some piece of data depends on another piece of data. So in this situation, if we're trying to store some data about something, you can say this data depends on the entity. If you wanted to make this, you know, a little bit more concrete, we could have a user, and one of his attributes could be his username or his email. These obviously describe the user. The email that we're talking about depends on what user we're talking about. The username depends on what user we're talking about. So that kind of breaks down the whole dependency thing inside of databases. Now, what is a relationship? Well, a relationship is just describing different ways we can structure these dependencies. So the three types of relationships are one-to-one, one-to-many, -one, -one and many-to-many. The first type of relationship is just a one-to-one -one relationship, and it's actually very, 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 very easy. The other two get a little bit more complex because then we're talking about relationships between tables. So for example, if we have a users table, and let's say these users can post comments on some kind of shopping website or something, well then we might have a comments table. Well, we need a way to associate who posted the comment. And that is where the relationship comes in. That is a more advanced relationship, and that's what we'll be talking about in the next two videos. But let's start now with just the one-to-one -one relationship. So yeah, I'm using the technical words like one-to-one -one without really explaining what that means. But I'm gonna explain that now, and then when we talk about one-to-many and many-to-many, -many, you already have that foundation and it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, seriously, this is like super easy. You might even be disappointed. A one-to-one -one relationship is literally just an attribute describing some entity. So in the example we had earlier, we had a user and an email. That's a perfect example. This email depends on the user. So let's just make this a little bit more concrete by giving it an actual user. And let's just say his email is caleb at email.com. The term one-to-one -one comes up because we have one attribute describing one entity. This one entity is being described specifically in email terms by only one email. <laughs> so in a one-to-one -one relationship, you can only have one email for one user. That means if we have another user over here, it would not follow one-to-one -one rules if this girl also shared this email. That is not allowed. Additionally, we cannot have Caleb have two emails. This would be illegal in a one-to-one -one relationship. And you might think, well, hey, what if I want my users to be able to have multiple emails? Well, that is actually what the one-to-many and also going further, the many-to-many -many relationships are for. A lot of this is just depends on how you want to structure your database. Sometimes it's a yes, no, black, white kind of thing. Other times it's a gray area where the database designer or the customer who's giving you the rules makes the decisions. So for example, you could design your database as a one-to-one -one with this, where a user can only have one email, and that email can only be used by one user. Or you could have it a different way, where a user can have two emails, or three emails, or unlimited emails, and so forth. Once you understand how to design the different relationships, it allows you to decide how to structure your database. 
And actually, later on when we start talking about something called database normalization, well, a lot of this relationship stuff is foundational to that normalization. And if you get the relationships right, the problems with the normalization goes away. Now, if you haven't studied normalization, that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. We'll get to that soon. But you might be reviewing and you might have already had some experience with normalization. So I'm just giving you that as, you know, a little teaser. <laughs> so if we want to design a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning that this is illegal and this person cannot share an email, here's and cannot share an email. As you set up a table and you put the attribute as one column in this table. So now that we have the table, we can put a row in this table to describe this specific entity. And that is how you design a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, once you get into some more of the advanced database design, you can tinker with the uniqueness of this column. So for example, if you wanted to allow another person to share an email, well then you could do it that way, or you can make it to where all the emails have to be unique. All of those things are things you can customize. So don't freak out about all of the details right now. What's important is that you get the general structure. And when I say one-to-one, -one, you should think of one table with a column. That means this here is also a one-to-one -one relationship. So the first name depends on the user, the last name depends on the user, and the email depends on the user. As I mentioned with the more advanced stuff, well, even though a first name might be repeated a couple times, in general, you think of a name as describing one person. So you don't have to be like super anal with everything. It would be totally okay to have some repeating data here because if I have another Caleb with, you know, a different last name, well, this is describing a different person. So this Caleb is like a different Caleb. <laughs> but we're getting into some detail that is, you know, way beyond 101 database design. So don't worry about all that for right now. The most important thing is understand entity attribute. Boom, there you go. Now, in the next video, we're going to be talking about the one-to-many relationship, and that gets a little bit more complex, but that's going to be a lot of fun, so I'm excited. Be sure to check it out and be sure to subscribe. Check out the description where I'm going to have a lot of useful links, including a link to a blog post that describes this with some beautiful illustrations and all kinds of cool stuff. So check it out, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.